हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू एड्यू टैप एंड वेलकम टू द फाइव एम सी क्यूज अ डे सीरीज एंड टूडे इज डे थर्टीन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज दैट इज वैलिड फॉर बोथ नाबार्ड ग्रेड ए एंड आई बी पी एस ए एफ ओ ए आर डी स्टैटिक पोर्शन एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर टूडे इज ऑयल एंड वॉटर कंजर्वेशन एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इट इज क्वाइट लॉन्ग सो इट वुड टेक अस क्वाइट अ फ्यू डेज टू कवर दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर सो लेट्स मूव अ हेड बट बिफोर दैट टू अर न्यू ऑडियंस काइंडली सब्सक्राइब टू अर यूट्यूब चैनल एंड डू जॉइन आर टेलीग्राम चैनल टू गेट द पी डी एफ ऑफ एवरी लेक्चर दैट वी प्रोवाइड हेयर ऑन यूट्यूब एंड येस टू द पीपल हु डोंट नो द टाइमिंग ऑफ द एम सी क्यू फाइव एम सी क्यूज अ डे सीरीज हैव बीन चेंज एंड नाउ इट वुड बी on tuesday thursday saturday at 1 pm live with me so uh, do remember this and now uh, let's move ahead with the first question and this was your in fact your homework also we'll look at the end that who were the toppers who gave the right answer but here the question it asks that what are the soil forming factors given by doku shev all right those who don't know he is also known as the father of soil science and you should remember this so comment down fast that uh, which of the following soil farming factors uh, that have been given by him okay so here see s here it uh, denotes the soil right and f is the uh, the forming factors here and then in bracket we have different terms uh, so the correct answer to this particular question it is pius says b and sonu says b janain says option number c uh confuse says b uh why are you giving such answers i don't know uh because the correct answer to this is option number a that is p c o p is the parent material c is the p is the parent material c is the climate o is the organism and here two terms that are missing one is r that is relief okay why because according to dokushev uh, only to some of the uh you can say conditions this relief that is relief is what the to topography what is the geography of that area that plays a major role and one more term that he uh, dokushev he denoted was t that is time but he put uh, he had put it outside the bracket uh, because uh, the time it is uh, you can say it is an uh, it is not energy here everything that is directly related to it but uh, time it is not energy or mass that is why he had put it outside the bracket the options that you are giving that option b uh, it was given by jenny right so there were two uh, scientists who had given this particular soil forming factors first were dokushev who gave this one and the second one which you are saying that was given by jenny and not dokushev all right so keep your concept clear here uh, everything is same and here in dot you can see these dot were the unnamed factors with some time effect according to him so these dot they are also there don't ignore them while studying all right so i hope if that is uh, right okay next let's come to question number 2 which says which of the following is not an agronomic measures to conserve soil and water all right so here you have to tell me that which of the following is not a measure all right and uh, comment down fast that what is the right answer to this so that we can move ahead and i tell you the right answer come on why are you taking so much time it's such an easy question you should know yeah so correct answer to this uh confuse says b okay now i am getting the answer so confuse says b is there anyone else who wants to give the answer okay purnima she say uh, says c contour farming and is there anyone else Uh, all right so the correct answer to this is option number e that is none of the above why because all of them are agronomic measures to conserve soil and water uh, purnima i'll give your answer at the end uh, right uh, first we'll complete this session so here uh, yeah so none of the above why because every of the method that has been mentioned here they are important uh, agronomic measures to conserve soil and water how most of you may get confused at why summer plowing is here although i don't see anyone asking that but see here uh, what are the different time this is the summer plowing that was in your option also so what is the 
why is it helpful see basically what happens summer plowing plowing you know you must have seen this act right so summer plowing or you can say pre monsoon plowing how is it helpful pre monsoon is just before the monsoon so see basically what happens during summer time or before monsoon the land it becomes quite hard right and what happens if the land it becomes quite hard so whenever the rain would fall because it's not like yes uh, we now can predict uh, the weather uh, what would be the weather but if you go for a normal condition and that is our uh, conventional method that we have been f uh, following so basically what happens you never know when rain would fall right so if this uh, field it becomes hard the rain it would just flow out side the field and that is why summer plowing or pre monsoon uh, plowing is done so that the soil it can loosen up and then the water it can percolate down whenever be the uh, rainfall all right next it is the furrow and ridges how is it helpful furrow and ridges ridges is the uh, this um, portion see these are known as ridges and these are known as furrow okay so how they are helpful so basically uh, when you water such area so in furrow water it does not just move outside the field all right uh, that uh, the water it remains here and then it gives time uh, to water in the field so that it can slowly percolate deep down and that is why this is also one method next is contour contour is specially used in hilly areas and here basically in contour farming what is done uh, same kind of plant it is grown at the same heights at same level and uh, Uh, here the purpose uh, the contour farming how it preserves soil also because here uh, if we go for terrace farming also right in terrace farming a lot of land it is cut down but here in contour farming uh, the topography is not touched but the plants they are sown at the same height at the same level uh, and so that there is no loss of soil in it next is your this vegetative barrier and how is this helpful as you can see here also this particular uh, it acts like a barrier such kind of shrubs are uh, are sown in between the crops so that they can uh, stop the water or they can slow down the water you can say or they can stop the soil to move out of the field that can move uh, through water all right so these are all important agronomic practices now we'll uh, move ahead to next question but before that uh, as af examination is uh, near examination of 38th january right so for the second phase so we have two courses for you one is with detailed videos and notes if you want to study from the scratch another we have mock test course if you just want to revise before examination and uh, do uh, remember that these are valid till 31st march and it is it would be definitely going to help you for your examination so we'll move ahead to question number 3 and it says dash is a material placed on the soil surface to maintain moisture reduce weed growth mitigate soil erosion and improve soil condition so basically i have given you a definition here and you have to tell me that what is the name or what is the material that is used for the same thing all right and uh, answer first so uh, the answer oh arun hmm where have you been So Arun says mulch. So is there anyone else who wants to uh, comment, or I just give down the answer? So Purnima also comes and she says mulch, and Amrutha uh, says B. Yes, and the answer is mulch. All right. So what is mulch? As the name suggests, it is a material, some material that we use, and we use it where we use it on the soil surface, and for what purpose? To maintain moisture. to reduce weed growth mitigate soil erosion mitigate means to prevent or stop or reduce right and to improve soil condition how let's see see here are two examples this is a straw mulch that we are uh, using here and here we are using plastic mulch now what are the uh, importance that we have uh, we have studied first of all it does what it uh, maintains moisture okay how see every see every uh, this uh, open area it is now covered with straw right so this would uh, first of all help to reduce evaporation because water it would uh, be trapped in uh, straws when the sun rays would evaporate the water from the field right apart from that uh, see uh, the water or you can say the soil or water when uh, the water when it would be uh, discharged in this field it would uh, slow down right and that would also help to prevent soil erosion not only that but when this organic material it will decompose it would add the nutrients into the soil right so these are all the benefits of uh, the 
uh, organic mulch but here we have one one also condition where we are using plastic so it uh, performs all the function except one which was to uh, provide nutrients into the soil right so these are and uh, the process and the process it is known as what it is known as mulching if you are going for a for examination these questions from mulch and mulching have been asked a lot uh, so do focus on that and in uh, in fact in nabard also questions from mulch has been asked in previous uh, years right not in 2021 but yes before that they have been asked so next will come and we come to question number 4 and it says in broad bed and furrow system preparation of broad bed is 90 cm and furrow now this is a uh, the first that we did there were the agronomic methods and now this is the you can say technical method or engineering agriculture engineering method or mechanical method all right so these are the here we are doing mechanical methods over here so you have to tell me the correct answer to this uh, See the correct answer over here. It is option number D. That is forty-five. Okay, so what is this concept? This is similar to what uh, that was of furrow and ridges. Okay. Uh, furrow and ridges. I hope you must have understood till now. If you haven't, comment down below. I'll again explain to you. Now here, what happens? This particular. Uh, distance where the plants they are they will be grown it is of 90 cm and this depth of the furrow it is 45 cm and again uh, this uh, especially uh, is helpful in the clay water uh, so uh, clay soils why because uh, see in clay soils because the particles they are much closer that is why uh, the water it's uh, the water it easily runs out of the field because water it needs time to percolate deep uh, percolate deep down into the soil now in these condition that is why these furrows they are so much um, kept of so much depth so that the water it has quite a lot time uh, to settle down and also because the roots they would spread somewhere here so it would be easier for them to take right so yes most of you have given right answer lena says right and so utpal says right yes uh, you all were correct now we'll move ahead to question number 5 and it ask the maximum amount of hygroscopic water absorbed by 100 g of dry soil under standard conditions of humidity that is 50% relative humidity and temperature is called okay so again there is one definition and you have to tell me the correct answer and then i'll tell you everything in detail right so i'm waiting for the answers comment down fast so then we can move ahead and end today's session so because that is the last question for today right and we are continuing with soil and water conservation and what your job for today would be to cover all the topics that we have covered today uh, study about them read about them make notes Uh, now mayur uh, he says option number b that is hygroscopic coefficient piyush says b uh, do we have any other all right so i've got two toppers for this answer and yes the answer is option number b uh, you can guess from this uh, from here also and here why have i added this question because sheila she has asked me uh, to explain what a wilting point permanent wilting point and hygroscopic coefficient is so here we are uh, starting about it so see now clearly understand because this can be a little bit confusing that has that's why i have kept in it in end see what is hygroscopic coefficient we have already studied in our previous lectures that there are three types of soil water that are uh, that are present right what were those first was the gravitational water right second one was the hygroscopic water and uh, hygroscopic yeah and lastly we had the capillary water right now here what happens gravitational water is the water we already know that is the water that percolates down due to the effect of gravity and it is not available to plants next is hygroscopic water what is hygroscopic uh, the water that is kept held by the soil particles around them and that is the reason that this water is also not available for the plants because they are tightly held by the soil particles now coming to the capillary water so now this is the water that is available for the plants to consume right so here in this question we have to just focus on this second one that is hygroscopic water so ignore gravitational and capillary for now now what happens see whenever uh, we have to give some uh, unit or if, uh, for example if i say 15 meter if i say that this is the length of 15 meter i must have compared it with this point right so we need something for comparison right so uh, similarly this coefficient is nothing but it is that 
entity that is used to compare uh, the other uh, units what i mean here if you're getting confused that if i want to if uh, as somebody ask me that what is the hygro uh, how much hygroscopic water is present in this field how would i know i should have some uh, a base to compare it with it right so here the base it is hygroscopic coefficient and now uh, how do we determine hygroscopic coefficient so basically it is the water hygroscopic coefficient it is the water amount of water and which water we are talking about we are talking about hygroscopic water and not the others so hygroscopic coefficient it is the maximum amount of hygroscopic water that can be ab absorbed by 100 gram of dry soil so here we have taken a standard that only we are we will measure in the 100 gram of dry soil under standard condition and what are these standard conditions that humidity will be 50 percent relative humidity and temperature will be 15 degree centigrade all right so again i'll repeat hygroscopic coefficient it is that entity from which we compare the rest right so hygroscopic coefficient is what it is the maximum amount of hygroscopic water which i've already explained you here right so the, the maximum water that can be observed by 100 gram of dry soil all right and there are some standard conditions that should be there that is 50 percent relative humidity and temperature should be 15 degree centigrade right so that is hygroscopic coefficient i hope that is clear to you all now coming to what is wilting point and permanent wilting point see what happens uh, uh, even though water is available to the uh, water is present in the soil still it is not available for the plant why uh, the best example could be hygroscopic that we have just studied it is present in soil but it is not available for the plant so in such conditions when the water it is not available for the plant uh, that time the plant it starts to wither or in simple language or in hindi if i would say murjha jate plants right so that stage is called wilting point when now the plants they are starting to get wither what is permanent wilting point permanent wilting point is that condition that uh, the even if now you apply uh, water into the soil or to the plant if you give uh, water to the plant still it would not regain its turgidity wilting point see they are of two types one is temporary and second is permanent so in temporary condition uh, if you provide water to the plant they would regain their turgidity but in case of permanent wilting point even though now you're providing water to the plant there is of it is of no use now it would die for sure so these are the terms wilting point permanent wilting hygroscopic what is wilting coefficient at that movement when the plant has now wilted at that moment what was the water hygroscopic water that was available that is known as wilting coefficient all right so uh, hygroscopic coefficient it is that base from which we compare but wilting coefficient it is that coefficient which is actually present when the plant has wilted so is there any confusion comment down below i'll just reply to you all right or we'll move ahead uh, with the further uh, slides so comment down fast is there any confusion uh, because you're not writing I guess everything is clear so I am moving ahead to next class and I hope she uh, Sheila your doubt is clear if still not uh, tell me about it and I'll uh, and I'll work on that and I'll make another video on that right so uh, yeah so uh, Piyush see uh, basically what happens uh, we are much focusing on the NABAD as well as AFO pattern right so here talking about the different values or different coefficients it's not of no use because in examination they are not going to ask right so here your focus should be on clearing the examination and to what extent the questions can be asked I hope your doubt is clear so these are the toppers of our last class means they answered well of the last however I was a little bit confused because some of you who has given here the right answer and I don't want to say the name you had given wrong when we did the first question so yeah now yeah these are the toppers and the question for today it is gully erosion is the advanced stage of I have taught you in my previous class right so that is why I have purposely included this to let know that how much do you actually remember what i teach right so here gully erosion is the advanced stage of that you have to tell me in the comment section and yeah that is all for today i hope you enjoyed the session 
and i really hope it was fruitful for you all now i'll meet you when i'll meet you on thursday at 1 pm uh, you do your homework you study the topics that i have covered today so that um your preparation it goes